Just off I-35, nestled behind some trees, rests a castle in the heart of the Arbuckle Mountains. The stone manor was once the home of Dr. Ellsworth Collings. Collings was a well-respected Oklahoman and the Dean of Education at the University of Oklahoma. Now the only inhabitants are the vines and flowers that make their homes in the crevices of the walls. Its elegant rooms are now marred with graffiti. The one-of-a-kind Rose Rock fireplace has been pillaged by vandals. But the once grand mansion serves as a playground for many children and tourists, and it still houses fond memories for Gary Clemens. We had a wonderful time, especially the kid with the wolfman mask, because he would hide in the dark shadows in the castle, and as it got dark and tourists were still coming through, he would lean out with that wolfman mask on, and uh, he, he got some interesting comments. <laughs> The rock and mortar chateau was built in the 1930s by Collings and his wife on their ranch. A maze of rooms, stairs and patios create the layout of the unique home. The large house was built by the hand of a local couple. The stones were quarried nearby and cut on site. The windows are slim and narrow. The ceilings aren't much taller than your average person. Historically, castles, certainly ones that you find in Europe, have very narrow passages and very uh, low ceilings. And if he was setting his design based on historic precedents, then more than likely that's the logic he was using in his design methodology, was going back to the historic precedents that were set in Europe. There are few clues that would provide answers about the style of the home. Unfortunately, being able to talk to Professor Collins, um, we, it's our own interpretation of what we see visually. And the things that we learn from it are building methodology, um, architectural styles that are popular at the time, uh, materials that were used for this type of construction and that's what we can get from it just from the site. The Collings home is just one of the several castles scattered across the Sooner State. It's not as rare as some people might think. We ha don't have a comprehensive collection of historic buildings in Oklahoma but what we do know about um, there's probably about six out there right now that we've identified. Collings' grandson eventually sold the house and it was owned by several individuals, but not all of the owners set up their home in the castle. For a short time during the 1960s, Clemens' uncle was a caretaker for the estate. He would use the time in Turner Falls to paint landscapes. This is his favorite place on earth. He would spend a whole day painting, then he'd load all that gear back into his little station wagon and look for his camping place for the night. And on occasion, Clemens would stay at the castle with his uncle. Back then, the, the barbecue grills were still in place, and I could uh, build a fire and maybe bring up some charcoal and uh, charcoal uh, hamburgers or hot dogs, and we would have uh, a regular dinner on the table down here that uh, is now kind of destroyed. But um, it, was, it was like a household. Gary Clemens now owns a home not far from his childhood playground. He also has a small shop in the area where he sells his artwork. During his visits to the mansion, he has heard a number of rumors and myths about the old castle. I like the little tower that's over behind you. And uh, a lot of people say that that was a jail because there are bars in the windows, but I don't think it ever was. I think it was a place for the children to play on a rainy day and I believe the bars were to keep them from jumping out or falling out and hurting themselves. There are even wild tales about buried treasure. I've heard that it was the hiding place for the, for the treasure of the Arbuckle Fort uh, robbery. And I don't believe that at all because the, the robbery of the fort took place like 50 years before. The myths and mysteries surrounding Collings Castle continues to lure tourists every spring and summer. The castle is now under Turner Falls Park Management. There are even plans to restore the sprawling home to some of its original glory, but a lack of funding has put restoration efforts on hold. I think it certainly uh, qualifies for preservation. In terms of this building specifically, you know, he is, again, like you said, important in education, important uh, locally within the community for the work that he did in Turner Falls area, but also architecturally, it's an unusual building and certainly worth recognition. Mm -hmm.